Before I get into your feedback tonight, yesterday Peter Gleeson joined me to go through the background of an integrity crisis engulfing the Queensland state Labor government. Today, the state's crime and corruption watchdog has decided not to investigate Premier, Deputy Premier Jackie Trad's almost $700,000 property purchase despite a strong voter backlash in that state. Instead, the C has recommended making it a criminal offence to leave a declaration off the pecuniary interest register. Trad has apologised. She's been demoted tonight. And we've got an update on the Premier's Chief of Staff as well, who's also embroiled in a scandal of his own. Peter Gleeson joins me now to go through all of this. You're on the phone, Gleeson. So I know I'm interrupting your long weekend, but uh, you know this stuff better than anyone. What do you make of the announcement today? We talked last night to say that the threshold for the Triple C relates mm. to criminal matters, that, that criminal uh, threshold, which makes it very difficult. In a roundabout way, they're saying that this is a real problem because whilst they're saying we won't investigate the example of Trad, if anyone does what Trad did in the future, they are saying, please, government, make it a criminal offence. 100%. So what Alan McSporran has basically said today is, look, I can't confidently proceed with a prosecution that would lead to a conviction because the threshold for corruption is too high. But what I do believe is that in situations like this, in particular the one involving Jackie Trad, that, um, we, and here it is, here's the recommendation, that new criminal offences for occasions when a member of Cabinet does not declare a conflict or when they fail to comply with the requirements of the Register of Members' Interests. So, you know, there are some within the Labor Party, particularly the left, that are today hailing this as a victory in some sense for Trad. Well, in fact, it's a very, very dark day for Trad. Her political career has effectively ended today. She had aspirations to be Premier. She runs the left uh, faction in this state, which is the all-powerful faction. They control the numbers in Cabinet and, of course, uh, in, uh, in caucus. But uh, she's been demoted, mm. as you mentioned. Uh, she doesn't have uh, carriage now of Cross River Rail. That was her pet project. That was the project that was going to get her re-elected in South Brisbane because, effectively, it runs throughout South Brisbane. Um, she has been replaced by her arch-nemesis, Kate Jones, who, of course, is the, uh, the likely successor uh, to uh, the Labor Party leadership if, in fact, uh, Trad falls by the wayside, which I think she will. And uh, we saw today, uh, you know, the Premier squibbed it again. I mean, under normal circumstances, we saw with Campbell Newman, he punted Ros Bates to the backbench when she breached the ministerial handbook. He punted David Gibson, the police minister, to the backbench when he breached ministerial um, uh, guidelines. And he punted Bruce Flake to the backbench when he did the same. But, of course... The Labor Party hasn't gone down that path. Well, you know, in, in the Howard years too, remember in that first uh, term, there were a number of sackings of high-profile ministers for similar sorts of breaches. So this is a bit of a Clayton's demotion. It's the demotion you have when you're not really having a demotion. Deb Frecklington is not letting it go. She was out there today. This is what she had to say. Anastasia Palaszczuk needs to sack Jackie Trad. Jackie Trad has broken the ministerial handbook and the Cabinet Handbook. It is up to Anastasia Palaszczuk to enforce the Ministerial Handbook and the Cabinet Handbook. Labor have hidden behind the Crime and Corruption Commission's assessment for long enough. So the LNP will keep pursuing this very, very much. Uh, that's clear and evident today. What about the Premier's Chief of Staff, uh, David Barbagello, who has been involved in his own uh, fracas, mm. scandal, I'd have to say, $250-odd of taxpayer money in, a, in the form of a grant going to him and a company he is a heavy investor in? What's the outcome there? Well, he's resigned today uh, and indicated to the Premier that he will not fulfil the final 12 months of his contract. Now, that comes off the back, as you say, of these uh, allegations that um, <clears throat> his company uh, that uh, was involved in developing an app received a $288,000 grant from this sort of uh, seed funding uh, program that the government had set up. Look, I think David Barbagello has probably fallen on his sword for all the right reasons, and that is that he can see the next 12 months being a world of pain for the Labor Party. Uh, he's, you know, he's had a, a very long, some would say, stellar career, and he's probably thinking it's all too hard. But, of course, it is a distraction. 
for the Labor Party when you've got the Chief of Staff with these types of accusations around. And, and Peter, just very quickly, um, you know, going back to Jackie Trad, I think this is a gift for the LNP. While ever Jackie Trad is in Cabinet, while ever Jackie Trad is acting Premier, as she will be for the next seven days when Anastasia Palaszczuk uh, flies out to Lausanne tomorrow night, her brand is toxic. And we know that there is uh, internal Labor Party polling which suggests that whenever her name is mentioned to people, particularly in the regional areas, let's not forget that she did tell miners that they should reskill prior to the May 18 federal election, um, their vote declines by about three or four percentage points. So I think while ever Jackie Trad is in Cabinet, while ever she's Deputy Premier, while ever she's Treasurer, uh, it's a gift for the RMP and Queensland. Just before we go, do you think the taxpayers will get their $250,000 back from Barbara Gallo? Well, it's a good question. Um, probably not. I mean, he will hide behind the argument that it's a, that it's a company and that... Uh, I mean, you know, this is the problem right now in Queensland, Peter. The optics attached to both the Trad and Barbara Gallo scandals, the integrity aspects. I mean, if you're going to be the chief of staff, to the, to the Premier of Queensland, and you are the Chief of Staff to the Prime Minister, you have to be scrupulously clean. You know, you have to... Every decision you make, you have to make it through the prism of how would this look uh, to the general public? And in both instances, I think they look terrible. Yeah, look, as I said before, I didn't even hold a share, not one share, yep. the whole time I worked for Government Ministers and, indeed, Prime Ministers, and, and that's the only way you can operate, I have to say. Peter Gleeson, enjoy your break. Thanks very much for uh, breaking up tonight and jumping on air for us. It's been uh, it's a great pleasure. to get pleasure, your analysis. Peter.